In this video, I am going to discuss about reconciliation of profits between marginal and absorption costing. Now we have a thorough understanding about the marginal costing and the absorption costing. So now let's discuss about the difference between the profit of marginal costing and the absorption costing. Marginal cost per unit is always lower than absorption cost per unit for the same cost object or for the same cost unit in a business. Now we know about this. This is because under marginal costing only the variable production costs are considered whereas for absorption costing both variable and fixed production costs are considered. Now let's do this example so you can refresh your memory on marginal costing and the absorption costing. Company A manufactures product X. The following costs are given. Direct material cost per unit, direct labor cost per unit, variable production overhead per unit, fixed production overhead per unit and administration cost per unit. So let's use this as the marginal costing cost card and this is the absorption costing cost card. As now we know under marginal costing we only consider the variable production costs, direct material cost per unit direct labor cost per unit, variable production overhead cost per unit. Fixed production overhead per unit and the administration cost per unit will not be considered under marginal costing because those are not variable production costs. Fixed production overhead is a fixed cost and administration cost per unit is a non-production cost. So now let's calculate the marginal cost per unit. 3, 2, 1.5 this is equal to 6.5 dollars so the marginal cost per unit is equal to 6.5 dollars now let's calculate the absorption costing per unit so we consider direct material cost per unit direct labor cost per unit variable production overhead per unit and the fixed production overhead per unit if you can remember, we calculate this amount by using the FOAR, Fixed Production Overhead Absorption Rate. So now let's calculate the absorption costing for the product X. 3 to 1.53. This is equal to 9.5 dollars. So the absorption costing per unit is 9.5 dollars. Let's go back to the previous slide. As you can see, it says marginal cost per unit is always lower than absorption cost per unit. Now we can understand this because marginal cost per unit is less than the absorption cost per unit. This is because under absorption costing, we consider the fixed production overheads as well. That is the reason. Absorption costing always reports the higher inventory value because absorption costing per unit is higher than the marginal cost per unit. Now you can understand this point. Because the absorption cost per unit is higher than the marginal cost per unit, the inventory valuation will be higher for the absorption costing. This is really important. Now let's discuss about what is the reason for profit under marginal costing and absorption costing to be different. There can be a difference between the profit figures under marginal and absorption costing because inventories are valued by two different costs. Now we know about this. Under marginal costing we value the inventories by using the marginal cost per unit under absorption costing, we value the inventories by using the absorption costing per unit. Because of these two values, the inventory valuation will be different. This will lead to a difference between the profit figures under each costing technique. Changes in the opening and closing inventory for a specific period will result in different profit figures for marginal and absorption costing. Because of the different valuation for inventory, Changes in the opening and closing inventory will lead to a difference in the profit figures. We will discuss about this point in greater detail because this is the main reason why the profit figures are different. 
if the opening inventory and closing inventory are the same for a specific period then the profit figures will be the same under marginal and absorption costing system this is also important if the opening and the closing inventory for the same period are same the profit figures will be the same this means in this situation we do not have to reconcile the profits between under marginal costing and the absorption costing because the profit figures are the same now let's do this example so you can refresh your memory on marginal costing profit and the absorption costing profit this is the example we did earlier so the marginal cost per unit and the absorption cost per unit we can use it here company a manufactures product x opening inventory 200 units production units 500 units closing inventory 300 units budgeted fixed production overhead and the production units are equal to the actual fixed production overhead and the units this means there will be no overhead under absorption because the budgeted figures and the actual figures are the same 400 units were sold during the year selling price per unit is 12 dollars and they have given the costs we need to calculate the profit under each costing technique now we know the marginal cost per unit is 6.5 dollars absorption cost per unit is 9.5 dollars so this will be the marginal costing profit statement and this is the absorption costing profit statement now let's calculate the profit figures under marginal costing and the absorption costing so the sales revenue this is equal to 100 units multiplied by 2 because they have sold 100 units during the year and the selling price per unit is 12 dollars this is also the same so the sales revenue figure is equal to 4800 now we have to calculate the variable cost of sales so the opening inventory is equal to 200 units variable production cost can be calculated by multiplying the production units by the marginal cost per unit closing inventory is 300 units so this multiplied by the marginal cost per unit 6.5 6.5 so the variable cost of sales is equal to 2600 dollars this is equal to opening inventory plus the variable production cost minus the closing inventory this is how we can calculate the variable cost of sales so we are going to deduct this value from the sales revenue from this value non production variable cost is given here which is 200 dollars we are going to deduct this value so now we can calculate the contribution contribution is equal to sales revenue minus all the variable costs so the contribution is equal to 2000 dollars now we can deduct the fixed production overhead these figures will be deducted so the fixed production overhead is equal to this 1500 and the administration costs is equal to 250 dollars now we can calculate the net profit which is equal to 250 dollars this is the profit under marginal costing technique now let's calculate the profit under absorption costing technique so the opening inventory is the same 200 production units 500 closing inventory 300 multiplied by 9.5 this is the absorption costing per unit so the cost of sales is equal to 3800 dollars we are going to deduct this value from the sales revenue value so there will be no under or over absorption because the budgeted and the actual figures are the same so the gross profit is equal to 1000 dollars
and the administration cost is 250 and I have forget to include the non-production variable cost which is $200. This is the non-production variable cost. So the net profit is equal to $550. This is the profit under absorption costing. As now you can see the profit figures are not the same. Under marginal costing it is 250, under absorption costing it is 550. This is because we value the inventories using different figures. Because under marginal costing we valued our inventory using the 6.5 figure. But under absorption costing we valued our inventory using the absorption costing figure which is 9.5. This is the reason why the profit figures are different. So now let's discuss about what is the exact reason why this is happening. If the closing inventory is higher than the opening inventory, absorption costing profit will be higher than marginal costing profit. Lower the opening inventory, higher the absorption costing profit than marginal costing profit. As now you know, we can calculate the sales units by adding the opening inventory plus production units during the period minus the closing inventory. What is this closing inventory figure? This is the amount of units that the business was not able to sell during the period. This will be carried into the next year. So this figure will be the opening inventory in the next year. So if we are using the absorption costing technique to calculate the inventory, and the closing inventory is higher than the opening inventory, the absorption costing profit will be higher than the marginal costing profit. You need to understand this point very clearly. Let's go back. As now you can see in this example, the opening inventory is 200 units and the closing inventory is 300 units, which means closing inventory is higher than the opening inventory for this example. So what has happened? The net profit for the absorption costing technique is higher than the profit under marginal costing. So when this happens, absorption costing profit will be higher than the marginal costing profit. And the reverse of this relationship is also true, which means if the closing inventory is less than the opening inventory, the absorption costing profit will be lower than the marginal costing profit, which is this point. If the closing inventory is lower than the opening inventory, absorption costing profit will be lower than marginal costing profit. Higher the opening inventory, lower the absorption costing profit than marginal costing profit. This point is also really important. You have to understand these points very clearly. If the opening inventory and the closing inventory are the same for a specific period, then the profit figures will be the same under marginal and absorption costing systems. This is also very important. You need to have a clear understanding about these topics under marginal profit and the absorption profit. When the opening and the closing inventory are the same, the profit figures will be the same. This means the business was able to sell its all production units during the year. So the opening inventory and the closing inventory will be the same. You can change these inventory levels and recalculate this example again. So you can understand the points we just discussed above. You can simply go to the seemaselfstudy.com and download the study note for this video and you can recalculate this example again. In the exam, this area will be tested heavily. So you have to have a clear understanding about these topics. Now let's reconcile the marginal and absorption costing profits. Using this formula, we can calculate the absorption costing profit. This is the formula we use to reconcile the marginal and absorption costing profits. So the absorption costing profit is equal to marginal costing profit plus closing inventory units minus opening inventory units multiplied by the FOAR. This is the fixed production overhead absorption rate. We can represent this formula in this format as well. 
marginal costing profit. Then we have to calculate closing inventory minus opening inventory multiplied by the FOAR figure. This can be either a positive value or a negative value. If it is a positive value, add this value to the marginal costing profit. If this value is a negative value, deduct this value from the marginal costing profit. Then using these two figures, we can calculate the absorption costing profit. Now let's calculate and see if we can get the same answers for the earlier example. So the marginal cost in profit is 250 and the FOAR is 3 and the opening inventory is 200 units, closing inventory is 300 units. Now let's calculate and see. So the marginal cost in profit was 250, closing inventory is 300 units, opening inventory is 200 units multiplied by the FOAR, FOAR is 3. So this is equal to 300, this is a positive value. So we add this value to 250. So the absorption cost in profit is $550. Now let's check this answer. The answer is correct. Look at this answer, 550. So this is how we reconcile the profit between marginal costing system and absorption costing system. You have to remember this formula or this format. Both of them are the same. Now that we have the full understanding about the marginal costing and the absorption costing as well as the profits under each technique. Now let's see what is the exact reason for the difference between marginal costing profit and the absorption costing profit. The real reason for the difference between the absorption and marginal costing profit is that the closing inventory will carry forward a fixed production overheads into the next period. As now you know, the closing inventory for a period will be the opening inventory of the next period. So higher the closing inventory, higher the fixed production overheads will be carried into the next period. So the profit for this period will be higher. This is the reason for the difference. Because under marginal costing, we do not consider the fixed production overheads to evaluate the inventory. But under absorption costing, we do consider the fixed production overheads. So when there is a closing inventory for a period, those closing inventory will carry forward the fixed production overhead for the period into the next period. As long as products are not sold, meaning they are in the inventory, the production cost of these products will not be taken into account when calculating the profit. This is what I just discussed about. We left out the production cost of the closing inventory into the next period. So we do not consider these production costs in the period we are calculating the profit. This is a limitation under absorption costing. When these products will be sold in the future period, then the cost of these products will be considered under cost of sales. When this happens, the production costs will be taken into account. So in the long term, both of these profit figures will be the same since this difference is caused by the timing of sales. This is really really important because in the long term the profit figures will be the same. But in the short term the profit figures may not be the same unless the opening and the closing inventories are the same. This difference is a timing issue because the profit figure is a short term figure. Usually we calculate the profit annually. When this happens, there can be closing inventories. This closing inventory will be the opening inventory in the next period. So there will be a difference in profit figures under marginal and absorption costing. If we calculate the profit in the long term, let's say 3 to 5 years, the profit figures will be the same because these closing inventories will be sold in the long term. So all the production costs will be taken into account when calculating the profit figures. With this point, we conclude the marginal and absorption costing under management accounting. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.